Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and I will be the host today. And today I am joined by Sean Cassell. Welcome, Sean. How are you? I am doing great, Anna. It is so good to meet you kind of in person. I know. I know. I am so excited for this because we have like known each other for so long. And now to finally be able to host you and learn from you and have this interaction with the community is really exciting. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I love that you're my host. I know, me too. I'm I'm super excited for today. And um, I just want to give everyone a warm welcome in the chat. Thank you so much for joining, Sean and I. Nice to see you all here. Um, and don't forget, if you are watching on Behance, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and vice versa. Come over and chat with us on Behance so you can ask Sean any questions that you may have um, and join in on the fun today. So Sean, I will just pop it over to you for you to give an introduction. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Hello, everybody in chat. It is so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm actually a little nervous, which I've been streaming for so long. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny, but I love seeing the whole community in chat backing me up. So thank you. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Sean Kozel. I'm a photographer and I'm based in Germany. I'm also an Adobe Express ambassador and also a streamer on Behance, YouTube and Twitch. Um, do we want to look at some of my work? Okay. Sure. There we go. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, I totally butchered your last name. <laughs> no, it's it's okay. The only people that get it right are Germans. Ah, uh, yes, that would make yeah. sense. There, there's a town called Kozel. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So right now we're looking at my Behance right here. And you can, of course, check out my past work anytime you want. If you want to see, I've got 220 streams, over 500 hours of live streams. You can click on the live stream right there. Also, I've got all my links. Um, let's just take a look at some of uh, some photography that I was able to get while we were um, just getting out of the lockdown. So this is up in the Alps and on the German side. Wow. We've got in central Germany, still the same central Germany and Scotland. I haven't been as, I haven't been traveling as much as I'm used to. Um, I There's, things, whales, there's things that have been occurring um, with the war and whatnot. So I haven't been traveling that much. So I've got all of those. You can check those out on my Behance page. Um, let's get out of here. Also, if you're interested, I have an Adobe, uh, Adobe portfolio set up and I love taking photos of animals. Um, this is one of my favorite photos I ever took, but by no means am I an animal or a nature photographer. Uh, I leave that to the pros like Oliver and <laughs> chat. Um, but when the opportunity arises, I always try to make sure that I've got the right gear. So, yes. and hummingbirds, just, I love animals. A little bit of macro, Wow, and that's I, cool. I hate snakes. <laughs> I hate snakes. Um, so yeah. Whoa, excuse me. I didn't mean to zoom like that. Let me get out of that. And one little bit, Anna. Happy International Women's Day. Ah, uh, thank you. I don't know if anybody has said that to you yet. Hopefully, I'm the first one because it's early where you're at. Yeah, you actually are the first to actually say it to me. Everyone's been posting about it on Instagram, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is a post that I made um, yesterday on my live stream. And I knew, I, I felt horrible because I didn't get the opportunity to do something for International Women's Day on this stream. So I wanted to make sure that I did something yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. a pre preemptive. Yeah. And so I that is it. my Instagram. 
Um, also, if you're interested, YouTube. But pretty much, again, all I do is live. I yeah. I have been watching James. Oh, and good. And I've been learning. So <laughs> the the premier DCC, if it's still called the DCC, or the Creative Challenge. Yeah, Creative Challenge. Yeah, he's been streaming every day this week. And for the rest of the week, he's he loves doing it. It's awesome. Yeah, James has been doing great. Aww. Now, before we get started, I have a quick story to tell. Let me jump <laughs> over to my Behance. And this is something that I find so cool. And I talked about this on my own stream. But years ago, you did a project on Adobe Live. Wow. And I was so inspired by it that once I was on invited to be on Adobe Live UK, I'm like, I'm doing this for Anna. I was so inspired. Oh, and oh I, I called it out. So I want to thank you. And really, this is to all Adobe Live because it's really, it, it's inspired and helped so many people during lockdown and just created a great community. Oh, wow. I love that so much. And thank you for sharing that with me, Sean. And, and what a gift for Women's Day to hear that feedback come back to me to know that not only the things that I create, but the things we all create here on Adobe Live are coming full circle for people's creativity and inspiring them to make more work and get in touch with their inner selves or anything that we want to create as artists and individuals. So I absolutely love that. RB said I made him cry. <laughs> That's a good Aww, one. I love it. By the way, I have to call this out. This is actually my photo. You can see the jet stream coming off the plane. Ah. And this is a super moon that I took off my balcony and was totally by accident that I caught the plane right in front of it. Really? So that's just one shot that's not even composited together? That's, that is one photo. Now, to be perfectly honest, I, I'm always honest. Um, what occurs because the sunlight is actually, you know, hitting the moon, you would not see this top part of the fin of, uh, uh, yeah, fin, fin, tail fin. Yeah. So this is actually the F 16 basic shape that is in Photoshop. So I added just that top of the fin. Wow. So that's it. Super Other than cool. that. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. No, thank you, Anna. <laughs> of course. Happy to do <laughs> so anytime. <laughs> okay. All right. So well, what are we going to be working on today? So today, let's start in Lightroom Classic. Now, um, to give you a little bit of history of what I do, what I've done in the past is every year I like to do a seasonal pixel stretch. And what that is, is... I will be showing you the pixel stretch stretch technique. And I like to go through my photos that I took for the year, choose a, you know, a handful of photos and use this technique, trying to uh, invoke the season by using color from the photos. So uh, first off, I wanted to start Lightroom Classic. I've already exported these and have them ready to go in Photoshop, but I wanted just to do a quick little tips uh, for people that may not know. So as of right now, above my head, you can see I'm in a collection called Adobe Live 2023 Stretch. If I go ahead, I click on the first photo and I come up here to all photos. I've got in this collect or this, this library, I've got 76, uh, 76,000 photos. So if I come up here to the filters, to the attribute, excuse me, metadata, we've got dates. So I can actually scroll down and this way I can just see the photos that I took last year. And so I don't have to go through all the photos. I don't have to do any type of searching. I can just click that filter, get into this year or last year's photos and actually start selecting. So I think that's a big tip because the biggest thing about Lightroom Classic is organization. Definitely. Yeah. 
do you do you, you use Lightroom, right? Uh, or do you I use, use both? Lightroom Classic as well? Okay, I couldn't remember. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I definitely am not nearly as organized as you are with it, though. My Lightroom is a mess, so this is a great tip. <laughs> I, well, I, I tell you what, uh, Terry White did a stream mm. on how to go through and organize. So like popping into locations, I've got it down from Europe, US, uh, you know, Quebec. So if I open up Europe, I've got France, Germany, Belgium. Um, I've been to 35 countries and only like five new ones since COVID. So, mm, wow, that's amazing though. 35 countries. Yes. And James was just talking about Iceland. Yes. And I will, yes. I will be going to Iceland this year. So I'm so excited for oh, it. When are you going? Um, it is going to be the end of August. Amazing. We're going in June. So we'll, we'll have ah, to chat. Yes. Yeah. I, I may pick your brain. Absolutely. That would be great. Okay. Let's jump over into Photoshop. And so right now I am at the home screen. So I'm going to click on the icon up here at the top. Caroline, hello. I didn't say hi to people in chat. May I, can I, Anna? Yeah, of course. Go for it. Everyone is talking about you. They're all amped <laughs> up for today. <laughs> well, so I'm amped up. Yes. Galana, Bruce, Caroline, Umicorn. Doris Stewart, I saw Sandrine, Lady Jane is in chat, Voodoo, I know I'm <laughs> missing everybody, but thank you for being here, I appreciate it so much. Ah, uh, this is too much fun. Okay, so I'm going to pop over into the libraries, because what I've done is, as I said, I've exported my photos from Lightroom Classic already. Up here at the top, you can see I've got Adobe Live. And if you click onto that, you will see all of your libraries. Please, everybody, start using more libraries, <laughs> especially if you're ever planning on working in Express, break those libraries up. Mm. Um, yesterday, I had an issue with flowers and I've got all these PNGs from Paul Tranny and yes. I couldn't find them because on a, on Adobe Express. And so I'm like, nope, I changed that up. So we're gonna jump here first and let's just grab a photo and start. So right now, let's go ahead. I'm gonna right click, hit edit, and we're gonna bring this photo in. This was some macro photography that I was doing for um, how to shoot in your backyard. Nice. And so that's, I was uh, shooting macro and also doing video, just trying to put together little videos. Um, I was inspired by um, Christy Odom. I don't know. I don't know who that is. <gasps> oh, okay. <laughs> She's been on Adobe Live a few times and um, she, she had the dancing mushrooms, uh, the time lapse. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes amazing absolutely amazing so first off i'm gonna just kind of go through show you what i've got going here um and also please if anybody has questions in chat about photoshop lightroom classic photography put them in chat we'd love tangents here yes we do so, <laughs> we're just gonna <laughs> hit image size right now so you can see what i've got going on so I have resized this when I exported it down to 3000 by 2000 pixels. That's mainly only because I'm doing this live. Uh, I just want to work on a smaller file. That's about it. So that's what we've got going on. Next off. Okay. I was checking to see if our heads were blocking it. It's not. I'm going to go over to the ABC. Anna, are you part of the ABC? Of course. <laughs> okay. Just double checking the Adobe Banana Crew. <laughs> I've never heard it called the ABC, so I'm going to oh. have to start calling it that. You have so many good little things that I'm learning already. Oh, that is actually Jesus Ramirez's stream. Uh, we came up with the name ABC. Actually, I did. The Adobe <laughs> Banana Crew. Um, if you go to my Discord, it actually says founder of the ABCs. Oh, wow. <sighs> so, 
So I've got the banana. Now the banana is actually, uh, if I right click normally, if you do not have a banana, you'll have the three dots, which is your edit toolbar or your hidden tools that you do not have. Um, so as of right now, because I almost never use them, we've got our single column marquee tool and single row marquee tool. Now there's a few different ways to do this, but for right now, I'm going to show you the most basic. So we're going to select the single column marquee tool. And what I'm doing is I'm going through the photo and looking for the colors that I want. So I love this white or this really light blue right here. Of course, the oranges, um, the lavender that we've got going on here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, I've got my mouse clicked and all I'm doing is making a selection right there. Now at this point, we're going to copy and paste. So I'm going to go command C, command D to deselect and command V to select, to uh, paste. Now, I don't know if you can see this on screen, but right there is a single line of pixels. So it's just one, it is selected and copied one line. Now, this is an extremely important step. We're gonna come over to our layer. We can see it right there, layer one. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna convert to a smart object. Now I have a shortcut key set up for this. So from now on, when I'm gonna be making a smart object, we're gonna go bam, shortcut key, smart object. But I wanna make sure everybody knows that's how you can do it. Convert it to a smart object. We get our smart object icon right there at the bottom. And we're gonna go command T for free to transform. Now, I am having major issues with Photoshop right now. And for whatever reason, my preferences for the free transform has gone the way of Illustrator. Hmm. So usually you don't have to hold down the shift key. It will transform uh, equally or proportionately, excuse me. For whatever reason, my Photoshop will not do that. So now I have to hold down the shift key for whenever I'm doing it. So, oh, yeah. So here, if you try to do this technique and anybody that wants to work with this technique and let's say you don't have photos, make sure to jump over to Adobe Stock slash free and you can pick up some free photos. Umicorn says preferences. Umicorn. So if we come up, we're going to jump up into not Apple. We're going to jump up into our settings. Used to be preferences. Now it's settings. And um, if we go into general, this is what's killing me. Use legacy transform. If you have that checked, you will have the same uh, transform as you do not have to hold shift excuse me, you do have to hold shift to transform proportionately. For whatever reason, I've reset my, my preferences, my settings. I've lost everything. Uh, I'm just, I'm angry about uh. it. Okay. So right now, what I've got going is I've done a very simple pixel stretch. The entire purpose of this, of doing a seasonal stretch, is I'm trying to invoke a feeling of a season. So this could come across as spring or summer. Anna, would you say the colors that you see here? I'm feeling summer? like the, the in-between of spring into summer, like it's late May for me. Okay. This was actually like September. Oh, okay. That's I guess that's, I could actually see that too with the purple and yellow and orange. It makes me think of like goldenrod and asters. And yes, I'm I'm torn now that you say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, it's uh, it's just trying to invoke a feeling 
And the way that I'm going to back up a little bit. What occurred to me about three, four years ago, that's, yeah, three, four years ago, a colleague of mine at a studio I was working with came up to me and said, hey, check this out and gave me a, um, a picture of a pixel stretch like this, but of an ocean. Mm. And the price of it at this gallery was astronomical. And I said, I could, I could do that. So I tried to use gradients. I tried so many different ways, but I couldn't get the colors right. Mm. Then it dawned on me that I'm not using nature's colors. Mm. You, you can make this blue sky. You can make the blue ocean. You can make the tan sand and, and, you know, put it together as a gradient or even s squares, rectangles. But as soon as I ended up figuring this technique out, oh my gosh, it turned out great. That's so, so cool. From that point on, I've been just like, I like to do that. So um, let me show you another quick technique that's done also. Now, if I come up here and we're going to go with the marquee tool, the rectangle marquee tool, and let's just select a part Yeah, we'll just select a part of the butterfly. You know what? Command D. I want more of that. I want to get down into these purples. And let's go really narrow. Okay. Command C. We're going to make a new layer. And Command V. And you can see it. It's right here. Let me zoom in. There it is. So at this point, I'm going to turn it into a smart object using my shortcut key. Go Command T, and we can stretch this out. So I have seen different techniques used for this to get whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Um, I like to use the whole photo. I like to take the whole everything, the background, everything about it. Um, because most of the photos I'm doing are landscapes. So at this point, you can do whatever you want with it. It's just, it's a smart layer. It's a layer. Uh, if you wanted to play around with it, you can end up putting any of your layer, any of your filters on it. If we go into distort and let's go down to twirl. Let me bring this over. Let's crank this up. We're going to hit OK. So you That's can. Super cool. Yeah. This is this is so much fun because you can turn around. You can liquefy it. Mm. Um, you're taking these colors. I'm not good with colors. I live on color.adobe.com. I can't choose the right colors. Um, so the one thing that I know is nature hasn't really screwed up much when it comes to <laughs> colors. That so, is so true. As long as I'm choosing colors from my photos and I haven't screwed up the colors too much by editing them, um, you're not going to go wrong. Okay, so really quick, as you can see over here in my layer panel, it's got the filter effect on it. I can toggle that down and there it is because it's a smart filter. So totally non-destructive. Um, you can do anything that you want with that. If I right click, I can hit clear smart, clear smart filters mm -hmm. and it goes right back. So the next one that you see a lot of going up to distort is the polar coordinates. We're going to get into that more later, but let me show you what happens. Going to hit OK and let's go ahead. We're going to just make a background layer. And not that. That's that's not good. Let's go with like this blue. So as you can see, the polar coordinates took the size of the file and tried to make it round and said, there you go. This is what we got. So there's a way to get around that. And we're going to be showing that later on in the stream. So we're going to continue on with that. Let's go ahead and delete our background. We've got, let's get rid of this one too. 
and turn this one on. Okay, so as of right now, we've got that. I'm happy with it. It's looking good. Hello in chat. People are still saying hello to me. I love it. Yes. The whole Next day, up. right? Oh, yeah. So as you can see up here, um, I've got some fall photos, fall, a lot of the summer. I've got some winter, uh, some, some uh, excuse me, some sunsets and some cityscapes. So before we continue on uh, dealing with the seasons, if there's time, I'll come back and we can work on the seasons. There's just different techniques I want to show first. And Anna, if you have anything that you want to interject, please stop me. All right. I'm loving this so far. It's like a different way of using Photoshop and thinking about colors that I've never really done before. It, it, you know what? Just have fun. Yeah. These, this is the way I look at it. We take the photos and, you know, I am trying to, I, I love editing. I absolutely love editing photos. So I edit. I usually stream about it. Then if I select a, select a few, I'll put them on Adobe Stock. Nice. At that point, they just kind of sit on my hard drive. So why not figure out different ways to play with it? Um, I've got so many photos. So this is, yeah. this is, this is another one. Um, what I want to do here. Let me think which direction I want to go with here. I'm thinking we go that way. Yep. Okay. We're going to go ahead. We're going to grab. Now this time we're going to use, oh, zoom it in, the single row marquee tool. So we're going to go horizontal here. Now I am going to go. I'm looking, oops, command D, I grabbed the wrong tool. Wrong tool. <laughs> That's a bingo square. <laughs> that would be really great. Photoshop bingo. Sandrine in chat has made a Kozel bingo. Oh, so, so things, things that you say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big time. If you, okay, I tangent time. <laughs> We're going to, we're going to, uh, I'm going to just do this really fast because I think you'll enjoy this. If I jump over into Insta my Instagram and I scroll down, you're going to see a series of stream definitions. So these are all things that people say in chat or streamers say. Um, oh my God, this is great. And, and so save. <laughs> yeah. It's a I'm, verb. I, that is for Carol. She always says save anna did you save your work <laughs> <laughs> my answer is always no <laughs> well if you actually look this is a great one because the first verb what you do when chat asks why your file is titled untitled <laughs> one <laughs> oh um, my god this is so good so so i actually went through with the help of the community um going through this share your screen um, we've got where you're muted. Yes. Um, a streamer who forgot to test their mic before starting a stream. Chat reaction to not being able to hear. Oh my God. This is <laughs> so good. I have to so, check these out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I actually, I've got like 18 of them. I think I made, um, they're not all posted here. I figured that would be kind of like spam, but, That's um, I think That's you all... should post them all, though. This is so unique and different and funny. Everybody, Anna said it. Yes. I'm going to do it. Yes. It's like the new meme <laughs> page. <laughs> well, there. Yeah. I, th I think it, that was just a fun. That was fun streams. Yeah. A lot of fun. Love it. Um, okay. So we've got our marquee tool. I'm going to go command C. We're going to copy that. Let's make a new layer coming down. I'm going to hit command D to deselect and command V. And I can't even see where it's at. Not a clue. 
So I'm going to take the layer, I'm going to turn it into a smart object using my shortcut key, go command T, and thankfully there it is. And we're going to stretch this up. Mm, that's cool. Okay. We're going to hit OK and we're going to hide that layer. We're going to go ahead, unlock that layer, go command J. I'm going to turn. No, I'm not going to turn that one into a smart object. As you can see, I love smart objects. <laughs> At least one of us does. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I, you're, you are the queen of glow. Yes. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and so I, I can't say anything about it. You've got your title. <laughs> All right. So we are going to go over to edit and come on down here to sky replacement. So these are different ways to use the tools that are already in Photoshop. Now, first off, we want to go through and look at, at, at uh, what sky might work for this. And I think we're going to go for maybe this one. Mm, that looks now, so good. <laughs> I'm going to ruin it. <laughs> Don't no! say that. Wait, quick question for you, Sean. Voodoo Val asked, what did you choose as a shortcut for convert to smart object? I use the claw. So command option control S. Command option control. Command option control S. And you yep. call it the claw? It's the claw because it's the feet. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the claw i so, love that <laughs> i had to like put my hand on the keyboard to test it out <laughs> yeah well as long as you're doing it with your left hand on a mac or at least on the keyboard i've got they're all three right next to each other so it's easy yeah yeah it's perfect that's good to know okay so <clears throat> just so everybody knows within photoshop you can actually come in here and get more skies there are more skies that you can download right there, download free skies. But most importantly, come down here to the plus and add your own. Now, I have come in and tried to add some of the strange photos that I wanted to make. And Photoshop said no. Hmm. It says we cannot see a sky in this photo. Oh. It does not belong in sky replacement. So I said, okay. <laughs> All That's right. So weird. I didn't even know that it would do that because I've added paintings in and it, it was happy with it. I used to, I've done oceans. I've done like underwater photos mm. where there's fish and things and it's taken it. Whoops. I hit my mic. Sorry. Uh, it's taken it, but for some reason, it, it has not liked it. So I think Sensei is getting smarter than us. Uh-uh, we are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> we are doomed. Okay, so right now we're going down to new layers. And I want, instead of duplicate, we want new layers for sure on that. And I'm going to hit OK. Now the cool thing here, down here at the bottom, you can see it is made, and let me actually close this down, a sky replacement group. So if I open it up, you can see we've got our sky with a mask. We've got edge lighting and we even have foreground lighting added in and also a foreground color. Great. Let's take our layer. We're going to bring it into that group. I am going to hold down the option key. I'm going to drag that mask and put it on top, turn off our sky and turn on our background. Mm. So at this point, you can almost get a feel of where I'm going with this. It's almost like the it's being sucked up. <gasps> Tim Say says no. Tim, it is so good to see you, buddy. I hope you are doing well. <laughs> um, we miss you, Tim. We miss you. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen Tim for a while. I am... I. I am, I've been missing Tim. I'm just going to leave it at that. Tim, it's great to see you. Um, now, with the sky replacement, sorry, that's a tangent. I'm getting emotional here now. Tim's Aww. in chat. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so first off, we have a little bit of an issue. You can actually see the clouds through 
our pixel stretch, right? That's not good. So all we have to do from that point on is just duplicate Command-J, Command-J, and we're going to go ahead, select those three, holding the Shift key, and go Command-G, turn it into its own group, and call this stretch, just so we've got it. So now at this point, you, whoa, sorry about that. <laughs> Getting out of control. You can't see the sky through the pixel stretch. So every now and then you just got to do what feels right. Yeah. Now, That's cool. We, I like this. Yeah. Now, um, as you can see, one of the problems that we have over here is it's given that is a atmosphere hill. So it's very blue very desaturated, uh, way off in the distance. So we want to get rid of that. So um, looking at the time, I would jump in, I would mask that out, and we could actually just jump in. Um, mm -mm. Let me think here. Hitting B for a brush on that mask. You know what? No, we're not going to do it. We're, this isn't what we're about. Uh, or we're not going to be getting into this, but that's one of the techniques hmm. for that is I would just mask that out. I would select it and mask it and be done with it. Um, another, other than a landscape, I want to open up this photo really quick. And now we're in Budapest. Hey, I was just there. Budapest is the most gorgeous city at night. I agree. Oh, absolutely amazing. Um, so we're, I'm just going to do the exact same technique on this just to show you. Uh, well, okay. We can do Budapest or we can do Paris. Ah, oh, I was just in both places. <laughs> so this is hard to decide. I was just in Malta. Where's Malta? Malta is an island country that is between the between Sicily and Northern Africa. Oh, it's wow. the third smallest country in the world. Um, That's amazing. And yes, absolutely great. Gozo is the island. Great. Okay, but enough talk. We can't sit <laughs> here and spar traveling. <laughs> Well, Maybe I've been we need here. to start a travel show. <laughs> oh, I think you would have me beat. I don't know. Yeah. You said you've been to like 53 countries or something. No, no, no. So. 35. Oh, 35. Dyslexic moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to knock this out quick because I want to show that this is capable of working with the um, with cityscapes also because I love cityscapes. So one of the things you want to do is you want to kind of grab up near the horizon. We're going to go command C. I'm going to make a new letter, new layer, command D to deselect and command V. Again, using the claw shortcut, command T. And let's bring that up. Mm. Now, this is one of the things I love when you get the city lights like this. So cool yeah so so duplicate that layer really quick we're going to go into edit sky replacement and wait for it and that looks horrid we don't <laughs> want blue skies we want let's see we want something dark yep that's what we want right oh, there yeah Ooh. i i i have not seen these yet the northern oh. lights and i've heard you could see him over in um the uk what was it last week yeah apparently it was like a really big storm that flared up so that's that's cool i didn't get to see them though so jealous okay so we're gonna duplicate those up just to make them a little bit stronger and we're gonna go ahead select those holding not the caps lock but shift Command G to group them. Now at this point, let's go ahead. We're going to put a mask on that. I'm going to hit B for our brush. And normally I would grab my um, uh, stylus, but I'm just going to use a mouse because not everybody's got to walk them, which is fine. I'm going to hit D for the default colors, X 
to go to black. And over here on, on my foreground color, you can see if I hit X, it toggles it. So I want to be on black because I'm going to be hiding. Black conceals, white reveals. And let's go ahead and make our brush just a little bit bigger. Coming up here to the top, I want just a soft brush. And we can even hit three to bring down the opacity down to about three and using the brackets to make it a little bit bigger. Now, I want to brush away a little bit here on the Capitol building. And I'm, I'm actually really loving the lights we've got going right there and also the lights we have on the bridge like that. Mm -hmm. That's spectacular. Um, I love the way it picked up almost like each window. I mean, that that is perfect. Oh, my god. Yeah, gosh. that looks so good. I, I really love that. So, I mean, Sensei, or excuse me, Tim Say did a wonderful <laughs> job selecting the sky. Um, and just whatever you see that you feel might need to get cleaned up a little bit, just clean it up. Like over here in this area, I don't think it's as, as dynamic of the colors. So we can just take that off the buildings. Just let it come from the roof. Be happy. <laughs> And there you go. So this is another technique that you can use a pixel stretch for. Now I'm taking a look at the time and I th I had so much to do today. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to keep this going. <laughs> okay. So we've done the vertical. We've done horizontal. And using landscapes cityscapes just trying to create something cool something different caroline says "Ooh, i love that thank you caroline and stewart ah such a great community i know okay now let's get into the fun stuff Ooh. everybody has seen this done and i love doing it but I can't do a, a pixel stretch stream without doing it. So we are going to do the pixel stretch on this woman here because it's International Woman's Day. Yes. I'm going to go Command J just because I love big files and making them big. <laughs> and we are going to come up here to our properties. Now... Um, for those of you that don't know, if you double click on a tab like I did up here, it will close that tab up and then I can have all my layers panels. Mm. If I single click it, it will open it up back. It'll open back up. So um, just so you know, if you start getting overwhelmed by the number of layers and you're not going to be using your properties panel and you don't have floating panels, Sandrine, I'm looking your way. <laughs> Go ahead, just double click on that tab. Close it down. All right, so first off, we're going to jump in and we're going to do a select subject. We're going to see how, how, how Sensei does with this. Oh, Sam, Mr. Peterson in chat. <laughs> Sam says, Sean, I think I know this guy. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we got uh, some jokes today. <laughs> my stream would probably be about a half hour long if it wasn't for chat yeah I, the tangents I the tangents and the jokes turn them into three hour streams and <laughs> i love it i think that's what makes it fun and interesting though like um, many people can teach but to have that flavor that you bring in is a, a huge huge differentiating factor <laughs> yes okay we're gonna do a couple different tests here now there are so many ways to select everybody has their own way and there's no way i'm gonna use the pen tool on this so if we go select subject we're gonna let sensei do its thing we create a mask and you can see there we've got it did a pretty darn good job let's go ahead throw a gradient behind and let's go down we got to go purple we have to go purple for today 
Yes. And Voodoo Val, this isn't for you. This is for International Women's Day. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, let's go for a radial. I'm digging that. Um, reverse it. Nope. Nope. And I think we're going to call... Let's call that good for right now. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So... If you look here, let's zoom in. Command plus, we're going to zoom in. We've got some funky stuff going on. Um, we've got this yellow spill. We lost her knuckles. We've got the yellow background in her hair. Um, Sensei actually did a really good job, but we need to do a little bit of cleanup. And uh, Wade, hello. <laughs> wow, we got uh, everyone in here uh i love this community can i say that enough i am right there with you sean okay so i'm gonna double click on our mask and that's gonna take us into select and mask now up here at the top you can see i've got my overlay what my opacity is and i love working with a different color um if i click on that our background color was a yellow like that so that's absolutely not what we want we probably want to go to the opposite we could go with a blue um anything that's going to make us see that yellow uh but the red's too much we're going to go stick with the blue i'm going to hit okay up here you have your opacity levels so you can actually go through and ha show the opacity of your background we're going to keep that up now to begin with, I'm going to hit refine hair, just see what comes up. And it did a pretty darn good job. Wow. Um, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Now we need to take care of some of these issues. And I'm going to go for a refine edge and we're going to see how it goes before I have to actually start using maybe a... Um, lasso tool, something along that line, but we're just going to go for speed here because people are not here to watch me select. <laughs> if you are, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's get back some of this. Now, I got to tell you, this is one of the things with this tool that I hear different techniques for and i would like your opinion anna if you if you use it i actually oh. to be totally honest i've had a hard time with it and like every time i see someone demo it it looks so easy and i'm like what am i doing wrong and every time i try it just like this is looking so perfect and i don't know why it never wants to work for me okay so this is one of the things that i have learned I'm going to zoom in. Well, okay, great. You can't see it. <laughs> I'm going to make on my circle. Let's be on her skin. See that dot right in the center? Yeah. That, the hash right there. Yep. Never have the center point go over the subject. Mm. So if I am trying to take some of this hit skin off, some of the skin off, that sounded horrible, some <laughs> of the yellow off, um, you do not want to go in past that point because now it, it's just taking it too far. Claudie, hello. Another great wow. person in chat. So many good people in here today. I know. They're so good. Um, so really, I try to be very gentle and going about very minimal on the edge. So if and you're adding the skin back in, like you did on her knuckles, you keep that dot inside the skin. And if you're removing, you keep the dot outside. No, oh. what's happening. This is the way now nobody has ever explained this to me. So I don't know this for a fact. So this is not an Adobe accredited fact. The way that I found it works is the center point is looking at the background. Mm. And okay. it's saying, okay, you've got that yellow background. 
So anything that's not yellow, I'm either going to add or get rid of. If it's yellow, it's gone. If it's not yellow, we're going to bring it back like her knuckles. So now nobody has ever said yay or nay to that. I've heard different techniques where people have said that they've gone in and you start inside where you want to select and then work your way out, like starting here on the pant leg and then working your way out. Uh, never worked for me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, so looking around, we're going to go quick here. That is looking pretty good. Command zero. And one thing I like to do is give a little bit of smoothing. We're going to shift the edge just a tiny bit, not too much. And then we're going to come down to the bottom and hit decontaminate colors. We're going to decontaminate. Mm. That look, that was huge. Let, let me zoom into her hair. Oh my goodness. So good. So good. Yeah, that helped a lot. Okay. Bam. Wow. Now, let me turn it off. Personally, I don't like what it did. When it was far out, it looked good. Up close, I don't like it. So, we're going to leave it off. We're going to go ahead output as a new layer with layer mask and i'll tell you why i'm going to do that in a second let's zoom in maybe zoom in holding down the space bar grabbing zooming in a little bit more okay we've got that fringe going on now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a new layer i'm going to hold down the option key in between the layers and we're going to make a clipping mask now i'm going to hit b for brush making my brush a little smaller. We're going to hit nine to bring the opacity up to 90%. And we're going to change the blend mode to color. Now, I have found I can sit here and I can fight with different selections, trying to get this taken care of and never be happy with it. Or let's just kind of paint it in. So as you can see, I'm just painting away or I'm actually painting on top of that fringe. And so all of that fringe is going away, but I still have, I missed a spot on her neck. I'm not worried about it, um, but I still have that full head of hair. Now it looks like it's a little desaturated and that is actually okay because on the top of hair for those of you that have hair that is <laughs> don't laugh at me anna <laughs> you um the the color gets lighter oh sorry about that the color gets lighter uh, the further out the hair is because of the light is coming through it. Now, mm. if I go command zero, that looks great. That looks absolutely great. So at this point for this exercise, I'm going to grab those two layers, holding shift, select them both and doing the claw smart object. Boom. So right now I've taken those two layers, including the layer mask and added that in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I could do command J because I don't think I'm going to edit the original smart, but I'm going to come up here to new smart object via copy. Click on that. We're going to right click and I'm going to rasterize this layer. This technique will not work if it is a smart object. So. As of right now, I'm doing a pixel select of her. That's that's the plan of attack here. Pixel select is straight up and down, or it's going to be horizontal. So I want to be able to select from her shoe to her head. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to go command option T. Now that just made a copy, but it's right in the exact same location. You can't see it. I'm going to hold shift and right now you can see the copy behind. And let's just move it over a little bit. 70 pixels works for me. Now you hit enter. Now at once you hit enter, you've told Photoshop, this is what I want you to do. Now, you know what? Do it again. So I'm going to hit command option shift T and you can see it's adding the layers and it's just copying the exact same amount over. So we're going to make a ton of these because <laughs> I need from her hair down to those the, down to the white part of her shoes. Let's do one more. One more just for fun. Okay. We're going to select that. We're going to scroll down. I'm going to hold shift. We're going to select that. We're going to go command G, put that into a group. And at this point, what we can do is come over to our banana tool. We're going to right click and go to our single column marquee tool right there. And hopefully I've got enough. If not, we'll be making copies. So we've got the top of that hair right there. I don't like it. We're going to go from the heel right there. Bam. I am digging that. Now, at this point, we're going to copy it. Command C. We need to make a new file at this point. So I'm going to go file. We're going to go new. And if you remember in the beginning, I said our files were 3000 by 2000, which this file is not, it's way bigger, but that's fine. So I'm going to do a square file here. We're going to select that 2000 by 2000 pixels. And I can't remember if I copied that command C just to make sure coming into here, going command V, turning that into a smart object and going command T command zero to see how, well, okay. That's a huge file. Thank you. Adobe stock. <laughs> and I don't know where everything is here. Why isn't it showing up? Yeah. Where is it? I don't know. Let's try it again. That's weird. We're going to deselect. Let's go ahead and turn everything off so we know it's just her. And let's try it again. Okay, so we've got that heel, got the top of the hair right there. Command C, Command V, Command T. Come on, be there. And it is not. What the heck? Wow. Let's see. You're on your group. Everything is. You know what? It's because I'm. Okay, we're going to do this a different way. Uh, let's grab the group. Let's turn it into a smart object. Let's do that. Um, Stuart says, because it is a group folder. I think it is Stuart merger group. I could have done that. I could have done a, a quick merge, which would have been smaller. Yeah. Chat's got it. Chat. Chat. You're right again. <laughs> There's a lot of smart people in this community. I know. I know it, it's really great because it helps you like as you're working too. Oh, you have no idea. No idea. Okay, I see it there now. Um, so Adobe Stock, or excuse me, Adobe Live sent me some social media stuff and said to try to promote this stream. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to promote this stream. I've never done, nor have I ever used Premiere for this. I'm going to make a video. Nice. So I made a video to promote this stream in Premiere. Um, 
scripted out, did the whole thing. And uh, chat, thankfully, was there and helped me uh, because I didn't know what I was doing. But that's the majority of my streams. That's so cool. So you did, you made the video while you were live? Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it, something you may not know about me, Anna, when there is a new app or something I want to try, um, I live stream it. It can be ah. the first time I open it. Um, if, if, if I am having those struggles and it's two different things. One, everybody can see the struggle. You're not going in and seeing these professionals that are working in these apps and are just blowing through it and making it look so easy. Because in reality, for a lot of us, when you're starting out, it's not easy and you struggle. And so I have absolutely no problem showing the struggle that I have. Um, as long as I end up, you know, making something. Yeah. So. I love that oh, idea. I feel like I'd be way too nervous to do it. You know, uh, it started out, I was streaming for about a year and all I had was the photography plan. And I'm sorry, everybody, we're going on a tangent here. <laughs> so I was streaming Photoshop XD and Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. And all of a sudden I got the full CC. The next day I was streaming in Illustrator. Um, a few weeks after that, I was streaming in After Effects. Wow. You know, um, I've done character animator, tangent time, deep tangent, going back <laughs> into my Behance. If you come to this project here, welcome to Kozilov. Um, I know there's no sound. I'm going to show this really quick. I'm Aww. not set up for sound. So. Okay, so with this, I use Lightroom Classic Photoshop, Illustrator, Character Animator, After Effects, and Media Encoder. For some of these apps, it was the first time. I created the buildings, these half-timber houses, actually from houses I took photos of. Wow, they that's are, so cool. We were, and they're, we were just they're, there, too. They're just, yeah, and they're 3D. Um, if you were down by these houses, you were kind of close to where I live. Really? Um, yeah. I don't I've, know if it's like that. That street looks exactly like where we were. We were near Rodenbach. Okay. I don't know no. if I'm saying that right. <laughs> Stuart, go go home, Stuart. He says no bridge. <laughs> uh, then I created a puppet and character animator and Photoshop. I edit. I you know I created a scene. I took it into After Effects. And actually put the whole thing together. It's one of those things when people turn around and see those streams. And they're afraid to try some of these apps. They realize after seeing me do it. And my struggle. That it makes them more comfortable to open them. Mm. So That's really amazing. It is. And of course, a lot of the times I would not be able to even remotely be successful if it wasn't for chat i agree so okay um at this point you can see i've got the stretch i'm going to command j we're going to duplicate that i'm going to go command t right click and we're going to flip that vertical okay there's a reason why so on these we're going to go up to filter now, okay, we're going to try it. We're going to go for it. And if it's not, it's fine. We're going to go polar coordinates. Now, if you remember the last time, what occurred is because the file wasn't square, gazoon tight. Thank you. <laughs> because the file wasn't square, when it pulled it around, it didn't make it a full circle. So now we've got a square file. So I can take that pixel stretch, whatever size it is, and actually make it 
into a circle. So same thing we're going to do here. We're going to go up to filter, distort, and polar coordinates again. We're going to click on that and hitting OK. Now, very important. Normally, I would do this all as, it, as a smart object. And you know what? I'm going to show it. I think this is important. Let's turn this one. Let me think here. We're going to make a new layer. Let's turn this one off. I'm going to go Command-V. We're going to turn that into a smart object, Command-T. We're going to do this really fast because these are all the little tiny mistakes that I've had in the past. Like, why isn't this working? And so, boom, we've got the size. It is still a smart object. Next off, we go Filter. We're going to go into Distort Polar Coordinates. Everything looks wonderful there. Perfect, right? We're going to bring this back into our file. We bring it in and it gets messed up. Hmm. Because it's a smart object, it knows what the inner file is. Then the effect is actually affected by when you bring it into a different size file. So Command D, we're going to delete that. That is why these here are rasterized. Now, if I go ahead, right click, rasterize that layer. Now I drag it in. It's perfect. There we go. Um, so we're going to bring that one in. Now I got to remember which one. We're going to bring this one in. Okay. Now, normally, when you have this type of effects, um, oh, voodoo, yeah, 70s <laughs> record design. I just saw um, that, too. I was <laughs> thinking the same exact thing. Ooh. That, see, this is interesting. This actually brought in the background because of the way I did it. Mm. So, we need to actually... That's interesting. Let's delete that. Okay, I am thinking, let's get rid of that one. And I think I the way I did it. So we're gonna go Command V, shortcut key, Command T, Like, this is interesting. I changed up my workflow just a little bit and had no idea what the repercussions were going to be. And they were real. Okay. Now, I am thinking, let's, hopefully this is the right way. I may need to flip it. Nope, that's good. Okay, we're going to hit okay. Now, coming into this file, oh, nope, Command-Z, Command-T, right-click, flip vertical, hitting OK. Everybody's going to know about polar coordinates by the time I'm done with this. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now, at this time, we're going to go, we're going to rasterize that layer right there, and bring this one in and of course it's the same one. <laughs> oh, Sean, pay attention. Brown's on the outside. <laughs> wow. It's okay. I missed it too. I was so interested in figuring out exactly what you're going to make here. Do you not know this effect? No. Okay. This is We're like gonna... all new to me. I, I've i seen people do all the pixel stuff, but I've never actually tried it. So I'm my mind is like very blown. Oh, well, this hopefully this is fun. I mean, that that's the whole reason behind this is it's I'm not making spectacular like um, designs. Um, it's giving me ideas uh, for sure. So I'm loving it. You're going to make it glow. Yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you been working on anything? Um, no, recently? no, I honestly have not. I've been drawing more than anything else just to kind of like take a break from Photoshop and yeah. What do you draw in? Um, I draw mostly in a sketchbook, but and with paint and paper, like old school style. Wow. Um, but I also use Procreate. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> why, why not Fresco? I know I need to use Fresco. <laughs> yeah. Why am I keep getting this background? This is very strange. Very weird. That is. We're going to go ahead. We're, we're going to go up here, marquee tool. I'm going to hold down shift. And we're just going to get rid of it. I don't have time for this. Yeah, we got stuff weird. to do today. It is. I've never had that happen before. So we're going to hit that. Let's go ahead. We're going to make a mask. Get rid of that background. We're going to go ahead, turn that into a smart object. Bam. We're going to come up to our other one. We're going to turn that into a smart object right there. And next off, we need to bring our girl to the top or our woman. So selecting our two circles, first off, hitting V for the move tool. Um, looking at this one here, we need to name this one hair. So double clicking, we're going to go hair. And then the other one, we're going to name it shoes or shoe. And this is just trying to keep everything coordinated. So we're going to go ahead, select both of those. With the move tool, we're going to center align, center align, and go command G. Now we've got those in a group by itself. Now with them in a group, we can go command T. And what we want to do is I have to hold shift. Sorry about that. We are going to come up and align the hair with the top of her hair. So we just want that to go about right, maybe down a hair. It's wanting to snap, so I'm using my arrow keys. That's good there. Now, as for our heel, I'm going to hold shift because I have to, <laughs> and we're going to bring this down to the heel of the shoe right there. And we're going to hit OK. Command zero to zoom out. And so, OK, this is getting kind of cool. I'm liking where this is going. Next off, what I want to do is on, let me think about this, on the group, we're going to put a mask. I'm going to hold down the the uh, command key, we're going to select the girl and on the mask, I'm going to hit option delete to fill it in black. So command D to deselect. As of right now, that's my mask. So we're going to command D to deselect. On that mask, I'm going to hit B for the brush tool. We're going to make it bigger. I'm going to hit zero for 100% opacity, and we want a hard brush this time. And we're just going to paint this away. Now, I have screwed up her hair. I just noticed, so I got to fix that. So we've got that. Let's zoom in a little bit there. We're going to hit X for white and click once right there. So this is what we've got going on. Now, at this point, people are like, oh, okay, we're done. Um, no, that is not true because there's no brown down here. So on our hair, we're going to add a mask. I'm going to come up to our gradient tool right there, and I'm going to make sure that we are white to black. Actually, we're going to switch those. So hitting X. And I want to get rid of the shoes. So clicking and holding shift to make sure it goes straight. 
you can see now I am bringing in those pinks from the shoe and her skin and her pant leg is all coming in now. So we can sit here and try to get a good blend here. And I'm, I'm digging that. That's cool. Uh, we could actually do, oh, no, nope, command Z. See, I don't mind the oranges down here, but it was too much. It was too much. Like, I really dig this happening. Um, let's grab that mask. I'm going to hit B for brush. And let's zoom in now. Making our brush a little smaller. We don't want that. Command Z. We are going to hit X. We want to bring these blues in like this we want to eliminate those oranges i am doing a really bad job painting <laughs> really bad i think it looks great okay let's just get rid of that Oh, I went too uh... far. Oh, okay. Let's go through. Let's take it 30%. And, you know, one of the problems is I'm dealing with a hard brush. Just not really getting anything I like. Yeah. Would you consider mm -hmm. making that a soft brush or are you using hard for a reason? Oh, well, I was using hard because I was specifically trying to... Nah. <laughs> Trying to keep I was that edge. Yeah, trying to keep that edge right there. Um, that's what I was trying to do. So let's. There we go. Okay, I'm. I, I can live with that. We're getting there. All right, command zero, zooming out. All right, so we've got our colors. We've done our our pixel stretch. I'm digging the light. I dig the way that it's blending. We've got our colors. Um, let's see what we've got going here, okay. We can actually, on the top layer... No, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, now this is where some of the cool stuff comes. We're going to double click and get into our layer styles. And this is actually on our female or our subjects um, layer. So we want to add a drop shadow. Now, going into the drop shadow, uh, first off, colors I always try to use, and I learned this from Sam Peterson, if you're here, still here, Sam, uh, always try to use a dark purple uh, as Paul Tranny said, shadows aren't black. See, I, I listen to all of you streamers. You, guys, <laughs> you all may not think it, but I listen. Yep. And it's funny how some things just really will stick in your mind. You remember exactly who said it. Yep. Yep. Oh, big time. Big time. So uh, right now. We're going to deal with these settings. I like the angle being at 30 degrees. I like that. Opacity, we'll mess with that in a second. And our distance, if you're watching the shadow here, you don't want to go crazy. But again, this is a woman with circles coming out of her. So it's probably okay to go a little crazy. We're going to keep our spread at zero. Our size is going to give us our blur. So we can give it a nice blur, just like that. Okay, I'm digging it. We're gonna hit okay. Now over here, my effects panels, yeah, I've got them set up so that it's collapsed. So I can turn this off and on. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing. You can see the shadow right here. Let's go ahead, turn that off. Hey, Sean, just, just wanna let you know too, we have about five minutes left. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Command zero to zoom out. 
I'm going to right click on the effects. We're going to come down to the bottom and hit create layers. We're going to create the layer and yeah, don't show me that again. Thank you. I know. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, that's what it's given us. That's our shadow. So we have our own layer effect on its own layer because we don't want layers or shadows to be hitting the backdrop. That's not behind her. So we're going to go ahead on that mask or on that layer. We're going to get a mask painting with black, hitting X, hitting zero to get up to a hundred percent. We want to get rid of this mask. We do not want any mask on this side. And I'm just making sure that the mask or excuse me, that the shadow is only hitting that back side on on the circle. So we've got that going right there. That's looking great. That looks really ne good. Next off, and I love doing that. You can add so many effects that they say, oh, you can only add one. Maybe, but not if you turn it into a layer. So you can just keep adding and adding. All right, so we're gonna add another layer right there and very simply, we're going to grab marquee tool. And because this is just for fun, just for fun, we need to add a little bit of a shadow. So we're going to grab our color picker. Like I said, we're going to come into our purples, more purple. We're going to grab that. And I am going to go option delete. We're going to fill that. Go command D to deselect that. And at this point, mm, I want to be safe. So we're going to turn that into a smart object. Always work, work non-destructively. Non Filter, we're going to go blur, go with a Gaussian blur. And we're going to go quite a bit. We're going to hit OK. And maybe check out multiply. Nope, normal, normal. We're going to bring down that opacity just so it's just barely there. And at this point, I'm going to hit V for the move tool. And I feel it needs to come like right there. We can even bring down the opacity more of that. So it doesn't stick out. I think right there. I think that's nice. 27%. It's yeah, subtle command really zero. Um, so there you go. That's actually perfect timing. I've got more things that we could have worked on. We could have jumped into, but um, let's go through really quick. For the pixel stretch, we've got our marquee uh, underneath our banana tool. We've got the single column and single row marquee tool grabbing rows or a single row of pixels and using your photos to actually invoke the seasons, using the colors from your own photos, bringing that in, then taking it to the next step where you're just trying to stylize a landscape or a cityscape. I like that. I, mm. I like that. <laughs> Me too. I think that's my favorite, honestly, even though I'm much more of a nature girl, like this has so much coolness to it. it I, I agree. I have never done this with this photo. Um, I just found it today and I'm like, Oh, I want to use this photo. Yeah. So yeah. Um, then of course I jumped in and grabbed an Adobe stock. So a lot, most of these items are actually not my photos, but if I jump into my libraries, you'll see a few of these are actually free photos. So you can jump in, you can jump in and just go to Adobe stock and Google jump. Amazing. 
Oh, this has been so great, Sean. Thank you so much for sharing all of these tips with me and with the audience and with the chat. I had so much fun working with you today and I hope you all did as well. Um, stay tuned and join Annika for her brand new branding basic show where you will learn how to work on your branding. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and take care. We will see you next time. Bye everyone. Bye.